Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Baruch Adonai. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise today. Blessed are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we praise you. Mighty God, we praise you. some praise. Adios. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Amen. So I think I have a right. Amen. 
Thank you for that encouragement, brother. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Would you, um, Lord, prepare me? I'll, I'll sing it. We're going to do, how many know that song? Lord, prepare me. Ready for that one? That Pentecostal favorite? Hallelujah. We're going to do it in English, and I have a Hebrew version. I'll sing the Hebrew part. Uh, eventually, I'll make some sheets we can pass out, and uh, we can learn it in Hebrew. I just gonna do nice and slow then. Lord, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a sanctuary for me. Let's do that again in English. That sounds good. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and on that one more time today. I just feel like we need to praise him a little bit more. God's really touching us right now. Sanctuary Pure and holy Tried and true With thanksgiving I'll 
presence here today, God. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence of peace. I thank you, Lord Jesus, Mashiach, Yeshua. We praise you today. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 And the song talks about a sanctuary for the Lord. You know, that, that we, my wife and I, before we started the service, we're actually just talking about a sanctuary and our options, uh, hope in, in the name of Yeshua, with God's help, in 2020 to uh, secure a public building to worship in, a sanctuary. And, you know, this, uh, the idea of a sanctuary is in the headlines. We had a, uh, a horrible church shooting uh, just a few weeks ago, and with the craziness going on, and security is at 
everybody's forefront right now. And but as we sang that song, you know, it just came to me, you know, through the words of the song that really the sanctuary God desires is right here. Hallelujah. It's in our hearts, it's in our souls, our body. Praise God. God wants to dwell in our midst. The verse that we read, uh, that we sang rather in Hebrew is Psalm 115, um, which is a Vasuri Li Mikdash. Veshachanti betocham va'anachnu denvarech ya me'atav ve'olad olam hallelujah, which is Psalms 115 to 18, and we shall praise the Lord from now until forever, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, praise God. God wants to dwell in our hearts. Amen. He wants to dwell in us. And really, we are the, we are the sanctuary. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for four walls. Uh, it'd be awfully cold without them. Hallelujah. And uh, but uh, we are the sanctuary that He's going to dwell in. He, he desires to walk with. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise today. <laughs> hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. And actually, it's Exodus twenty-five eighteen. Lord, prepare me uh, to be a sanctuary that I may dwell in You. This is actually a mistranslation here. Praise God. I got a song list here. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody today. I've got some, uh, it's, I want to take prayer requests right now. We were talking before. Uh, someone had a prayer request. Uh, I was just asking your wife, what was the name of the person that you needed medication for? Oh, you know what? I don't, she, she met somebody. Matter. He knows who. Yeah, let's pray for the person she was else, talking about. Whoever they are, he knows. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate when people pray for me, so I want to try that. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Woo. Praise God. I I prayed. Well, I prayed and was read. Yes. That uh, I didn't even say she kind of, but I just that his presence was powerful. Hallelujah. Us. Amen. And there is a strong presence. We can have a lot of these strong church bill and no anointing. That's right. That's God. I, I just put that. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, what was the name of the person you prayed? Uh, prayed uh, let me bring my... Let me get it. That's okay. Was Would the person you met at the DMV? Oh, Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Oh. Uh, and we went to Chabad uh, Lighting, uh, and we met two Messianic men that are interested. Let me explain that. There were How many celebrated Hanukkah? We just had Hanukkah. We can see we still have Hanukkah I decorations up. I want to learn what that is, and... Okay, yeah. It's a John chapter 10. Uh, okay, amen. It's a feast of tabernacle, a feast of uh, dedication. John chapter 10, Yeshua was right there uh, in the celebrations of Hanukkah at the temple. It's uh, the rededication of the temple. And before Christ, uh, a few hundred years, about 200 years before Christ, the um, Greeks tried to take over the temple. They sacrificed the pig on the altar. The Jewish family of Maccabees took it back, cleansed the temple, and had to rededicate it to the Lord. And uh, there's light in the temple that had oil. So, and according to the story, the one day's worth of oil lasted eight days. It was a miracle. And so it's a festival of lights. It's a miracle of the oil. So it's about rededicating the temple to God. We just got done singing about the sanctuary and the temple. So it's really about rededication to the Lord, rededicating ourselves uh, as the sanctuary of the Lord to God. And uh, clean everything out. Absolutely. The light. To let the light burn. And so it's a celebration of the light of God and, and rededicating ourselves to the Lord. And so it happens every December, around December, sometimes November. Um, Yeshua celebrated it. Uh, from what we can tell in John chapter 10, it says Yeshua was at the temple. That's where the celebrations happened. During the <coughs> Feast of Dedication. Everybody say dedication. Feast of Dedication. Dedication in Hebrew is Hanukkah. So it's the Feast of Hanukkah. Feast of Dedication. So that's what we just, we, it's eight days long. It's a fun time. Kids love it. They get presents. They get to light candles. Uh, you, so, so is this like, do you do it like at different hours? Every, every night for eight days. We started on a Sunday this year. Yeah. And, and so at night, as soon as nightfall happens, we have a Hanukkah, uh, which is a Hanukkah menorah. We had a bunch here. I like the light. Praise God. That's, that's called a Ner Tamid. It's an everlasting light. Symbolizes the fire that was in the tabernacle. Continually, praise the Lord. 
first you know, the first five books uh -huh. that is instructions and also I heard from another place light. Amen. The Torah is a light. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The Torah is a light. The, God's word is a light under our path and a lamp under our feet. Absolutely. That's what the Psalm said, right? Praise God. And, and then it says, done away with. And what did John say? Praise John said, we're going to talk about that today. John said, Hallelujah. John said, in the beginning was the what? The, the word. Wow. And the word was with God and the word was God. And that uh, right. word was made flesh. It was to say, he was the light that lights every man that comes into this world, right? Right. We talked about that yesterday, we? Right? So, the Word is a light. The Word of God is a light. It's a light under a path. And so, we have to remember that when Jewish people keep the Torah, they live for God according to the Torah, they have the light of life in their lives. They have life. God blesses them with the light of life. Um, unfortunately, without faith in Yeshua, you don't have eternal life. Exactly. So, when we pass from this world to the next... Uh, that's where we have to face God, face judgment. So and, and that's the difference between the Old Covenant and the New. With the New Covenant, we don't just have the light of life, uh, which, you know, people that keep the Torah do, and, and everybody's born with uh, to a degree, you know, and, and can and keep to a certain point. That's just regular life, right? That's the light of life of, of humanity. But when you believe in Yeshua and you're born again, you get eternal life. The light never goes out. So when we pass from this world to the next, we not only have just the life in this world, and we have eternal life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hallelujah. So let's all stand and pray for these requests uh, right now. Yeah. Please keep my father in prayer. He's recovering from a heart attack. Uh, he had a few uh, weeks ago. Um, I think it's been about at least three weeks now. Oh, uh, he's 72. I think he's 72. 72? Yeah. But he's, wow. he's been in a great shape his whole life. I'm, I look up to my dad health-wise, and up until 72, he had never had to have any kind of heart medicine or anything. So, wow. praise God. He's a uh, high blood pressure all of a sudden? Um, yeah, basically something like that, yeah. Is, is uh, David. David. Right. David, okay. please keep him in prayer. He's doing good in recovering. Let's pray that he has a full, speedy recovery. Uh, we just saw him a few weeks ago, and uh, he's, he's doing good. But please keep him in prayer for complete recovery baby I yes we might actually go tonight baby so <laughs> but we might go to to Fresno because she has an extra day of vacation and we just found a school called and said oh you got an extra day of vacation so <laughs> praise God Keep my grandfather in prayer in Fresno in the name of Yeshua Your grandfather. for salvation. Your father or grandfather? Grandfather. Okay. So my dad had a heart attack, but my grandpa is in Fresno. And let's uh, keep my family in prayer. My grandfather's passed. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, we could go. Let me know. So, yeah, let's, let's uh, remember the whole, the whole family. family. I just yes. want to say this, not to shake down or anything, but. I was assigned to take care, to, just to be with my father, help him cook, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This was in 2014. Mm -hmm. And we were in uh, Oviedo. Mm -hmm. My uncle left an estate, and we were living in one of his houses, my uncle. Mm -hmm. I was even after he passed. Right. So they let, gave it to my dad. And I was assigned security there. So what happened was he was already 97. Praise God. And there was something going on, you know, just like, uh, kind of like a, a bad spirit, a bad attitude spirit in, in the place. Right. That was trying to bring a wedge between us. And so I just left that alone. And then he was sitting at the table, and it's relevant. So my heart set, go set, go set in front of me. So I went there and I said, hey, Dad, I'm going to go. So I tried to change the subject, but line up, uh, both of us. Amen. So I noticed something strange on my dad. I said, hey, Dad, how's it going? He said, pretty well, but he didn't look at me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, what's your full name? Oh, Lord. Gregory. And I said, um, what's your date of birth? Very smart, yeah. So it was um, 
three, okay, 321. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. 21. Is that your 21? I said, where are we living? I was just doing And he said, uh, the number and the, the name of the street. Uh, three. I said, oh, yeah. So I actually got him and said, just a company name so he'd be comfortable. Yeah. And call 911 and took him to Ranch Hospital. He's a growth chart. He made it by a spring. My lord. Now he's. Um, was it a heart attack or? A stroke. And brain My hard. lord. So I'm just telling you that I understand this. I'm yes. Really yes. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, long story, he barely made it. He was an ICU, then IC level two. And then he was um, sent to the um, recovery of speech mm. th uh, therapy and mobility. He recovered everything. Praise God. And then, um, let's see, on the year 16, my brother and him, they separated us. And my dad went to Santa Monica. He lived in a beautiful apartment facing the ocean. But I know he misses uh, the other house because there was you know, the house that's on a mm -hmm. golf course. Right. So we were able to, you know, he would treat the birds. I remember you told me about that. Coyotes and yeah. like <laughs> gazelles. Weird, all kinds of ducks. But your dad recovered fully. He, yeah, at, he was recovering. That's amazing. Before, right, okay, when they took him out of the hospital, he was about that after the therapy, he recovered his, work, his speech and recovered his mobility. So he works out every day. Praise God, he wow. Does, he doesn't need 99 in March. Oh my it's goodness, that's amazing. So in that March, will be 99. 99, and he wow. Talks, he, sometimes he talks like a, a, a guy younger than us. <laughs> and he doesn't have any amnesia or Praise any God. Alzheimer's. That's great. And he barely goes to the doctor. That's amazing. Oh, um, I, I took a product that's not prescription. This is for the peptides in the brain to reactivate the brain cells. Uh, this, and then, guess what? He had um, we were all living together. That he told me he remembered the name of the director of the school. Ninety years. No, was he? Ninety years. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, ninety years ago. That's amazing. Let's talk more about that after. Oh, yeah, so, I don't want to start. That's so awesome. Let's. But let's all here. pray for these people. That's here a good. That's a good testimony too. Yeah, so that's encouraging. He Praise God. Believe. He doesn't believe. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for everybody right now in the name of Yeshua. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your name. It is great and greatly to be praised. We believe in your name today, in your name of salvation, Yeshua. Jesus, we thank you today, God. We pray, God, right now that you would keep your hand upon my father, David Soria, God, that you would give him a full recovery. In the name of Yeshua, a, he, a healing and a speedy recovery, God. Touch his heart, touch his vessels, his arteries, his entire body. In the name of Yeshua, bless him. Let the stint heal perfectly. In the name of Yeshua, and put your hand upon his health. In the name of Yeshua, and give him salvation to the utmost. In the name of Yeshua, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we pray for the people that we met recently, God. Keep your hand upon them, O oh yes, Lord. We pray for the Hall family today. Keep your hand upon the entire family. Encourage them, comfort them, strengthen them through this difficult time. But Shem Yeshua, we pray for my grandfather in the name of Yeshua for salvation, God, that you would save him, O oh Lord, in the name of Yeshua and keep him in good health. In the name of Yeshua, in Jesus' name, God, and everything we pray in the name of Jesus. Hashem Yeshua. And everybody say amen. amen. Give him some yes. praise today. Yes. Yeshua, we praise you today. Hallelujah. Yeshua, Yeshua. You may be seated today. Lord bless you. I got to turn so this computer keeps going to sleep. Oh, got shorter when I said it. Was, I just oh, that, that's... He's, he thinks fast. He does things faster than... That's amazing. Than I and my brother. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Crazy. That's amazing. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get this computer to stop going to sleep because it, it has that function where it, it just turns off or the screensaver. The screensaver keeps coming on. You know, you will try that. He tried this morning. And he tried. There we it's go. Not, it's not going to happen. He's not going to run this out. Amen. Mr. Shaw, you got a testimony?
Well, I have a special prayer request. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so when I was single, I was very bold, and I said, well, I won't get married. <laughs> okay, we've got to be bold in front of God. Uh, my grandfather, who died, uh, he was in his 90s. He was a pastor on fire even until the day he died. Now, God, if we're specific with God, God will, even in our depths, will, will show us favor. My grandpa always said, I want to, I'm going to pass away behind the pulpit. <laughs> and he was visiting my uncle. And that night, out of the blue, a bunch of ministers got together. My uncle didn't even know it. And they all gave him honor. Yes. That wasn't even his home church. They all decided to give him honor. And he passed away right after that. And it's like God said, okay, I'm going to put you in. It's a big, big thousand, thousand people church. He said, okay, I'm going to honor you've been faithful your whole life. Yes. So in everything, I believe we've got to be bold. And we got to be specific with God. Yeah. So I was the last one in my family to get married, just because I'm a different <coughs> personality. And I would stand up at church service and say, I need a husband. And, you know, people would laugh, but God honored my boldness. Yes. And yeah. nothing's too great for God. Wow. Hallelujah. Well, there's a building down the street, and I keep bringing up this building. And I've been calling this man and calling this man. And he wants way too much money for it. So I've been driving, I look like a stalker, he's in the Bay Area, <laughs> I've been driving past this empty building and praying over this building. Neighbors are starting to know me, oh, uh. but you know what, I believe that we should never give up on what we want from God. Ooh, and awesome. we should never be ashamed to stand up and say, these are my needs, because the house of God is supposed to be a safe place, a safe, not a place of non-judgment. A place where we support each other. Yes. So I'm going to boldly, and I feel the Holy Ghost, I'm going to boldly ask God for that building. Okay. I don't know if God uh, yeah. wants to give it to us. We'll give the tax right off. We're, 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 you know, we're, all the paperwork's good. Uh, if He wants to give it to us, then less lease. But I'm asking God for a building this year. Because I believe we can't really um, outreach here because it's our home. Yeah. We have children. Yes. Uh, yeah. can, we, you know, I can't just have anybody come in. Because, you know, there is a spirit right now of anti-Semitism that is building up in the world. Yes. And we got to pray for the Jewish people and, and this, this spirit that's rising. Uh, you know, we ended up not having a Hanukkah service, uh, our Hanukkah party. And maybe that was God's will, because we saw attacks on Hanukkah parties in people's homes in New York. Oh, okay. no. Oh, no. A man came in and got a machete, and he attacked everybody. And as a matter of fact, a pastor's aunt came over, and you know, we were jamming, oh, please, Jesse, I mean, you know. And uh, she was talking to me, she said, yeah, maybe it was God's will. Well, that opened the door for me to start talking to her. And her and her daughter actually prayed. They're getting curious. They asked us to come to do Hanukkah. They were really talking about what is this about? And they're Catholic. So they're like, you know, we really want to know. Are you Jewish Catholic? Well, they're. Uh, yeah, on my yeah. side. On his side, so they're they're getting curious. They're getting kind of like, well, what is this all about that you know that you do, and what's it about? So it opened the doors. But you know what? I, I'm being specific. I want God to give us that little building. And if I have to drive, okay. If I have to drive and look like just a loon every week and pray over that building, I'm like, you know why? <laughs> a year before me and my husband moved here. We came out and saw that little building. Mm. And in the yes. crack of the door, okay. the crack of the door, draped over a chair was a prayer shop. I feel the Holy Ghost. A prayer shop. Oh my gosh. Is that and it wasn't yes. a messianic church, but it was a prayer shop. Yep. Oh. And I feel the Holy Ghost. And I feel like ever since that, a year later, oh, God put us here. Down the street. I didn't realize how close this was until what a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna find that little little church, and it was it's right down the street. From here, like from here. Literally it literally takes us five minutes to get there. Oh my gosh. It's standing empty. It needs work, but you know what? In Ooh, Jesus' yes. name. If it's God's will, if it's not, God give us something better. But I'm believing because of that prayer shop that Amen. God's gonna give us that building. <laughs> I'm asking God to give it to us. That's, yeah. So, find with me in prayer. 
I know the neighbors thinking, what is this crazy woman doing? Because, yeah, I got the windows down. I got the Jewish music going on. You know, I love Kleshmer. And, you know, they're like, oh, okay, here she comes again. But I'm driving around that building and saying, okay, Lord, I'm claiming it no matter how long it takes. So bind with me in prayer okay. that this is our year to get a building. Amen. Sounds really good. Good testimony, Sister Soria. Praise God, and that's true. We um, <coughs> snuck around the building and looked through the crack of the door, and the only thing we could see is the look like the pastor's chair with the prayer shawl draped over it. So it was actually a it was a sanctuary. Right? It was a, yeah, it was a church. I believe it was some sort of Baptist church. Um, looked like an African American, uh, predominantly uh, Baptist type church, but. I would say it's um, twice this, maybe three times, but about twice this at least. Twice this. And, oh, it'd be awesome. They um, they do have a area that they say is parking, but it's covered with grass. I think. Yeah. And, grass. and we grass and weeds or something. It needs a lot of work. But I guess that's technically a parking lot, <laughs> but it can be cleared out and everything like that. They haven't kept up the outside, but it would be a perfect, you know, uh, small church building, um, and. So that would be a miracle. There's also another uh, pastor that I'm talking to for a building as far as renting from, but um, in, in Jesus' name, B'Shem Yeshua, God is able. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Let's give the Lord some praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you for that building. Hallelujah. Amen. So please keep uh, praying with us about that. And, uh, and I want us to also keep the Jewish community in prayer around the world. If you haven't noted, uh, been keeping up uh, attacks on Jews, are happening on a daily basis in New York and Europe and in America, um, all over the place. The night that we had our Kanaka uh, party planned, no one, no one was able to come, so we just decided not to have it. That same night, a rabbi in, uh, I think it was New Jersey or New, New York over there? I think it was New Jersey. New Jersey, I think it was New Jersey. Um, a rabbi on the exact same night was having a Hanukkah party, and someone came into that party with a machete, Machete. And somebody had a, had a weapon. And he came in with this machete and guy. started hacking people up. In the house. Was, in the, some, I heard this in the news that day. Somebody came in with the machete or something and started going at it. That's what happened. And somebody had, was carrying and then shot him, killed him. That, so well, that, was, the that was the church that happened oh, okay. the very next day, I believe. Yeah. Texas church. It was almost the, the same exact time. At the Hanukkah party. That came in? Uh, well, uh, uh, Hanukkah party, yes. the Hanukkah party was, was an African-American guy. Uh, the church was a, a white guy. And you can see the video of the church one. Uh, were there was a guy, a security uh, uh, usher, they call them sheepdogs, right then took him out. The, the, the shooter got two people, but it was fast. It was over in like five seconds. Well, there was... Uh, uh, four or five uh, safely, uh, you know, carry, mm -hmm. and it was actually I think the, the security guard. Well, the and guy was, right by him did it. One of the other guys just stood. Boom. Yeah, they had uh, in that church. They had ex FBI. Uh, good so church. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's the only way it wasn't worse. So uh, in that situation. Paul said, "We're living. You know, per perilous times will come." And so please keep the Jewish community in prayer and the church world in prayer. This is a satanic attack on God's people, um, both New and Old Testament, uh, Old Covenant people. So um, please keep, uh, you know, this is really an attack on religious it people. It is, it is. But uh, God is able to protect us, and uh, we need to uh, protect ourselves at the same time. Amen? Uh, uh, one more thing, I'm sorry, but no, let's, let's pray for our country, because I know that... Trump just took out. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, and they said from Iran. home. Yeah, homeland He's security saying yeah. there could be a lot of attacks. Uh, so let's just pray for our country our this, at this point. Yeah, and Stockton, the 209. If you guys are keeping up with the news, uh, a visiting family from uh, Nevada was at the mall just last week. And I guess the young people here, some of the predominantly black young people, teens basically, uh, have been beating up people on, uh, I think it was New Year's Eve, or right around there. And family uh, of like four were coming out of the mall. Uh, it was like a mother, there was a four-month-old baby, there was a little grandma that was disabled, 
all they were trying to do is go from the mall to their car to get in their car and leave. And this huge group of uh, uh, gangbangers, gangbanger type. Uh, well, they were just really young people, but they're troublemakers. Uh, apparently, um, came through, and the people were like, "Please, we just want to get to our car. We just want to get to our car." So they didn't mess with them. They got in the car. They got the baby in the car, and but they were kind of like all surrounding the car. And I guess uh, the person behind the wheel honked the horn, and then the mob just uh, lost it. This teenage mob of thugs just lost it and beat up the the, the white woman that was the, the mother uh, of the Were of they the group. in the car already? The grandmother and the baby, I believe, were in the car, but the, the mother wasn't. And we're talking about a, probably 100-plus people kicking her in the head, stomping on her head. Um it's horrible for this town. People are not going to want to move here with that kind of thing. Um, but it's horrible for uh, racial uh, relations um, because it was clearly racially motivated. Uh, <coughs> one of the, they have video of it. One of the guys says, hey, they, they're beating up a white lady, blah, blah, blah. And it's all on video. It's all on tape. Uh, we need to pray for 209 in the Stockton area. Uh, this racial tension is getting ridiculous. And, and God really, we need really God to intervene in this situation. Uh, with these people and to protect innocent people, Amen. All right. But um, we'll pray for that in our, uh, you know, uh, our own time. Yeah. I I do. It seems what? like everything is going negative, right? All, everything's happening. But during all of this, God always gives a revival. He's shaking up His people. His people's God. America is very spoiled in a lot of ways. We're, we're really blessed financially. Sometimes people feel like they don't need God at that point. Things are kind of getting shaken up a little bit. Um, and I know there's racial tension, but I had to go to the store yesterday. Uh, I didn't realize that my license was expired. Uh, we got nothing in the mail because when we moved, uh, we, we forwarded all our mail, but nothing came in the mail. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to the UV and Lodi, and it was a nightmare. The systems went down, everything went down. I thought, oh God, we're sweating, we're standing. I mean, it was hours. But I sat down, and a woman sat down next to me, uh, his, a Hispanic woman, actually reminded me of my husband's family. And she just started pouring her heart out to me. Her name was Jessica. Literally, I sat an hour counseling with her. She was a single mom of four. She was kind of embarrassed that she's a dishwasher. She was saying how. You know, she just wished someone would show her some kindness, a kind mm -hmm. smile, a kind face, a kind act of gesture. And I was encouraging her, and I noticed people around us started listening. I've never packed in like sardines. I kind of noticed, like, God, you're really using the situation. People were just, you know, kind of, you know. And I told her, I said, you know, uh, you're an everyday hero. You're a single mom of four. You're divorced. You're doing what you need to do for your kids. I said, every job, there's honor in every job. Even if you're a dishwasher, if you're a door dasher, whatever you do, there's honor in every job. And your kids are seeing you make the sacrifice to give them a good life. And I just started encouraging her. And it just kind of touched my heart because there were so many people in. She goes, you know, I'm, I'm nice to people. I smile at people. But they never smile back. And I kind of told her, I said, well, you know, we're, we're going to have to be the change in this. And, you know, because we need each other. You know, keep doing that. You know, your kids are seeing that. You know, they're going to get adults and say, okay, you know, my mom told me to do this and always be nice, even the people, you know. But it made me realize that so many people here are so lonely. And, and they just want someone to show them kindness. Actually, God's love is what she's missing. Amen. That she just doesn't realize that. I said, well, thank you, God, that you showed me that. You know, and we talked, regardless of, you know, race, of, of anything. We just talked. I mean, she just bared her heart out. And so we, I left, and I, it was dark. And so, oh, Lord, all this stuff is happening, but I got to go to the store. So I kind of went to a 99-cent store, because everything's cheaper there. I said, oh, God, you know, this is really kind of not a good area. But after everything that's going on, I noticed that people were looking out for me. I was alone. It was dark. There was homeless people everywhere. Not all homeless people are you know, violent or anything, you know, just like there's good and bad and everything. But I noticed the, the Hispanic man that was ahead of me, he was making sure I was okay. 
He was, you know, oh, are you okay? You know, one. The woman behind me uh, was, you know, the security, the Indian Sikh security guard was helping putting my groceries in and, help, you know, making sure Amen. I went to my car. So, you know, yeah, there's all this stuff happened, but there's community starting to come together. Hallelujah. People are starting to realize if we don't look out for each other, if we don't care for each other, then we're going to let these bad people take over. Amen. And that needs to bleed into the church. We need to say, you know, God, I'm going to show someone a, a, a good, a, a nice face, a smiley, an act of kindness, because I don't know what's going on. That woman, she was so lonely. She was so desperate just for someone to listen. And it kind of floored me. Her adult, uh, her adult daughter was sitting next to her. I didn't even realize it, and she was tattooed. She was, you know, doing her hand like it was all tattoos and stuff. Yeah, I didn't condemn her. I just said, well, you got a, you know, you got some talent and some art. Why don't you go and grab it? You know, you know. I turned, and they just, you know, when I left, I went, bye, and thank you, and it just touched my heart. So let's really pray that the Christian messianic world, we reach out. Amen. We be the, the light. Amen. Because they need us. Hallelujah. I mean, good testimony, Sister Soria. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Persecution also, it all works out together for good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, like, okay, bring it on. No. <laughs> okay, that is, bring it on. What's happening is that is <laughs> make us depend on one another. Amen. Regardless of what class they say we are, how much yeah. we make, how we look, where we live. It doesn't really matter. Amen. John said, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness overtaketh it not. So the, there's always a light in the darkness. Yeshua, Jesus is the light in the darkness. It might be dark outside, but we can be the light. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. We're yeah. supposed to be the so light light. To the light of the world. Is that right? Yeah. And so we're supposed to shine in a dark place and shine the light of God into dark situations. The world's always going to be dark. It always has been dark. So it's dark back in Yeshua's day, but there's always the light. Amen? Praise God. And the light is never overtaken by the darkness. Praise God. Let's give the Lord some praise today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I've been lately trying to count my blessings. And even though things are rough and look tough and look this and that, there's always a miracle somewhere. Even in the, in the small day-to-day, -day, I've been doing some delivery uh, you know, I don't want to name the company, but food delivery on the side, you know, and this and that. And DoorDash? Or yeah, DoorDash. Sure I, I've what been doing that. Opportunity minister. Yeah, and you know, it's, um, I was just driving around thinking, Lord, it would be really cool to have one of those pizza carriers because you get more pizza deliveries and this and that, it keeps it hot. And I went to one of the restaurants and I said, hey, where do you get those? So they have the DoorDash pizza carriers. He said, hey, do you want one? Oh Those are like thirty dollars. I said, "Yeah, I'll take one." I'll so he, you know, he, he gave it to me for free. He said, wow. "Here, take it. Give me a brand new one uh, for free." And I started getting a lot more pizza orders. I noticed lately, and so I put it in there. And I said, "Thank you, Lord. That was the miracle of the day." You know, no matter what, there is always some sort of miracle uh, that God does. He said, "I'll never put more upon you than what you can bear." Is that right? Even though right when you're at your breaking point, right when you're like, it's just too much to bear, this is too heavy of a load, God will open up a door for an escape. He will make a, he will give you a little, he'll make a way where there's no way. Praise God. And there will be a little miracle there to get you out of that situation. Did you have a testimony, Sister Elizabeth? Sister Elizabeth has two. I want to hear your testimony, Sister Elizabeth. What happened in the market, and then she went to another And I, I'm sitting down, it's just because of my... Leg, my, I'm having leg problems. But, well, Jeff, Jeff, I sit down. Praise we're, God. We're not a religion. <laughs> All right. yeah. I want to hear your testimony. Sister, Sister, Elizabeth. Sister Elizabeth has some incredible testimony. I'm going to have to lay off for a little bit. <laughs> Where's your volume? Um, okay, so Please. lately I've been like um, kind of at a point of rededication because last year was like I didn't feel like I was reaching my full potential. In Christ, I wasn't fulfilling my calling. I felt like suppressed. The enemy wanted to put me in a place of 
not being productive, not being, not seeking him, thinking maybe I'm overwhelmed with too much work or too much on my plate that mm -hmm. I can't serve him. Mm -hmm. Or the bills came in, I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay, I guess I can only do this much for you. Yes. But that's not what the word says. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And everything else will be provided. Praise so God. I, what, was, what happened? What's the, the miracle that happened? Well, the miracle. The testimony. The miracle, uh, you know, going back to the sister Maya's testimony about, you know, being in places, dark places, places where, you know, Things happen. I've had situations where people have come against me and very right. vicious, very mean and angry, and and I'm labeling their race as this is the way they all are. This, <laughs> this, is, this is just a genetic thing. There's nothing that can resolve it. But that's why the enemy, because mm -hmm. you know, he wants us to think the soul just because their skin is dark or their skin is light that there's no point in reaching them. That they're you kind of chalk them off as um, right. unsalvageable. <laughs> so what happened? You chalk. I'm but, bringing this up because you were in the market. But, yeah, well, this is good. This is yeah, good. Yeah. In the market, I had good money market. on my card that didn't load. Oh lord. Oh man. <laughs> I told her you're gonna get some some incredible some some suddenlies. And, and people are going to be givers. America, and I said, "Oops, the market." I'm getting the heretics here. So what happens, Mr. Schultz? Oh, it's in line, and you know they they ran through my stuff. And I'm like, "Oh my God!" So I had so much money in cash, and my card was not usual. Oh know. Lord! So the person behind me was like, okay. <laughs> watching, and he's like. And the person says, what's the, what's the problem? I'm like, well, you know, I'm short. And he just like freely just <laughs> sends a bill to the clerk. Wow. Yeah, just out of, you know, the kindness of his heart. You know, I'm thinking, um, you know, getting back. That's a good miracle. <laughs> Praise God. But not everybody does that, you know. And then Pay for her cross, part of her cross. Cross. Yeah. That is amazing. That's somewhere, somewhere well, else you told yesterday. Me. I know. I know. I said you were like redeeming the time. That's why I wasn't trying. Sure. To no, this was good. Though. This was good. I wasn't trying to cut you off. But I know that Pastor here. No, that's good. I want to hear it, Elizabeth. Go ahead. It's just this is our first Elizabeth's first testimony. I'm excited yeah. about it. It was like the donuts. Um, Remember the donuts? Oh well, yeah. Yeah. All these miracles. I'm excited about it because I told her something. Like donuts, you know, like and then the same thing happened again. It was like you know. What happened? Just someone trying to pay for my bill. How did that happen? My Lord. I don't know. Did I you don't start? No, this was uh, yesterday in Napa. So oh, my goodness. We're in Napa. Yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. At the store. Okay, you, you invited again. me to go with you. I had to get some water because the car was overheating. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> So I offered to pay for. Wow. Well, no, you, know, you, you told me something about the donut store. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That <coughs> they went ahead and you were short of a uh, short of whatever it was, and somebody said, "Here, just." That was yesterday. Oh and my goodness! Wow, three times. You know, I, <laughs> was, I, was, was, I wasn't going to say this not because I want to talk. It's just because I told her that you know we were just like talking about the word reading, and we were reading. We were just like talking about the word reading. John, you know, and just going through the word and just trying to keep it in the whole yeah. spirit as much as possible. And I said, I don't know if this is of him or just of me, but I've got a feeling that you're going to get some giveaways. People are just going to want to give you <laughs> And I said, I like that, giveaways. <laughs> you know, and I just said, oh my gosh, now I need a false prophet here. Is this coming from my mind? And I, and I understand that they. You know, people will tell you, the prophets will tell you some of the gifts you have, but you know, we have to be very, very humble with that. And I said, I I just don't want to be a, a false prophet or a heretic. And I said, I'm not sure, but this is what I feel. And then she comes and tells me, like, oh, okay, thank oh, you for doing this. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's that's awesome. Awesome. So you didn't tell me. But the thing was, was that this person was African American who just, you know, 
And I already, I mean, right. the devil puts our mindset on people, situations, and it's like racism, like Brother Sariah mm-hmm. mentioned. Racism can not only happen out there, but it can happen in here. Yeah. And whatever we have or the experiences we've gone through mm-hmm. to hold people and things, you know, bitterness against people, of certain mm-hmm. races, and, and ministry, and like, my got to get all that out because we can't use people for holding things against other people and mm-hmm. other races and I'm and I'm I'm not you know I think I'm saying this because I had it I grew up in Oakland I was like a miss I had my dad shot oh, you know, wow. um, by three black men and it was like um, growing up I saw the impact that that had on my life that you know you can't hold on to these things it could have happened to anybody from any race so um so that's kind of that that looking through the good of people was really something that you know that's not okay with god's grace that's all. That is good. It's, good. Like that. it's just like the <laughs> best <laughs> service ever. We haven't even had preaching. When you're continually <laughs> looking and experiencing, you know, when you go out to the market and you're feeling the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost is radiating through you and it, it's God's provision to protect oh, you and put his angels around you. Oh, and yeah. so it, it, it doesn't, um, it's just something that, that getting back to the new year, um, yeah. That's right. It's a new year. To, Hallelujah. <laughs> to the Holy Communion. It's just to dedicate and to sanctify this year as part of consecrating it to Him. Hallelujah. And to get out all the junk in my life, whatever pollutes, mm-hmm. whatever influences evil from all sorts, from all sources, to clean it up as best as I can. Because mm-hmm. I feel like we're spending so much time to um, invite evil into our home. Mm-hmm. Invite the um, mm-hmm. the influence that we have to constantly purge out everything that is coming in. Yes. It's gonna keep us from His love and His grace. So that's kind of the way I started. And good be, testimony. Be, being in traffic with tennis. <laughs> <laughs> then we were ten out. <laughs> what did I do? No, I no, I'm serious. <laughs> what happened? Saying, what happened in traffic? When people. Well, Cut you off. <laughs> what happened? You what, know, what you just, yeah, no, nothing. I, I, can, I, I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> that's challenging. Amen. That's an awesome challenge. That's an awesome testimony. Amen. Service. Well, that's, I love testimony. A lot of pastors have cut out open testimony, but I love it because Paul said the body edifies itself in love. And how is how's the body supposed to do that? How's the body, if I'm the only one that talks, how's the body supposed to edify itself in love? Besides just worshiping together and feeling the presence yeah. of God. Me, you know, I mean, it's one way if someone's praising God, you're going to get the overflow. You're going to feel strength to praise and worship too. But the body can also speak to itself. And God speaks through all of us. That's what the, the original term, Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Ghost, right. is a rabbinic term. And the way the rabbis used it was that when God speaks through somebody, and you know they're speaking through the, God's speaking through somebody to you. And it's just like, like Sister Elizabeth, you just gave a testimony and it spoke to me. You, you mentioned a verse that I hadn't even thought of, and it was just like, bam! It's not about a gap. I know that verse, but it was just right at the right time, and right at the right moment, it was just like, that was the Lord speaking through you. That's what the rabbis called the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit spoke through somebody. And you know it's God, it's, they're just saying whatever they think they're saying, but really God's speaking through them. That's the original term of Ruach HaKadosh. What we'd call the gifts of the Spirit. Right. It's God speaking. That's one of the God's, the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. That's God speaking through somebody. It's the Ruach HaKodesh. Praise the Lord. So I, I believe in testimony and the body, oh, right. body speaking and edifying itself. And essentially, the Lord is using everybody when, they, when you testify. What did John say? The, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit yeah, of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy is the rabbinic term for Ruach HaKodesh. Because the most common thing that the Holy Ghost does when it moves on an individual is they speak. Can you say praise the Lord? That's what prophecy is. That's what the prophets do. The Holy Ghost moved on someone, filled Ezekiel. What did Ezekiel do? Thus saith the Lord. He spoke. Praise God. So praise God. 
We're just letting the spirit of prophecy work here. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise right now. Praise the God or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move on, though, because I got some good stuff I want to teach. And um, it's already 2.53, but I am excited about what we're teaching today. Chris, I'm going to give us some, a, a teaching portion and a preaching portion. And I'm excited about both of them. And it, these, these tour portions and stuff come every week. And, you know, uh, you know I love them all. But I'm especially excited about uh, this week's portions uh, that, that are on the, the calendar, that are on the, the Jewish traditional, um, uh, basically, tr once a year, we go through the Torah. Uh, I think it's 54 portions. And in addition to the Torah portions, there's what's called the Haftarah. And the Haftarah is a portion of the prophets. So they take a portion from Isaiah, Ezekiel, you name it, and there's a portion there that we teach on. I'm going to focus primarily on the Haftarah today uh, when we get to that, which is about uh, a prophecy that Ezekiel gives. But first, I do want to give it a teaching. Let's pray right now that the Lord will bless the remainder of the service. Also, uh, before I go on, um, how many believe in worshiping the Lord? If you break it down, really what worship amounts to is obedience to the Lord. It breaks down to service to the Lord, serving the Lord. When the devil came to Yeshua and tempted him, uh, he rebuked him, said, get thee hence. He says, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So that tells us right there that worship is equal to service. Worship is equal to serving the Lord, obe obeying what God says. And so we worship the God, God in different ways, uh, but it all amounts to obeying the Lord. So uh, he commands us to praise him, we praise him. He commands us to, to love our neighbor, we love our neighbor. It's all about worship. One of the ways we worship is through giving. So please remember to give into the Lord, and God is going to open up your coffers and your storehouses and your barns and your bank accounts. I'm not preaching the gospel, the prosperity gospel, but I am preaching that the Lord will provide for your needs if you give to the work of God. Amen? Praise God. Amen. I appreciate that, brother. Hey, it will come. Amen. I'm just going to pray that the Lord opens up the windows of heaven and blesses you. Um, and like Sister Elizabeth was talking about, you know, there's a little miracle every day. Hallelujah. God just opens up these, and it's these little blessings that really make our day sometimes. You know, most people get, wouldn't get excited about a pizza container. <laughs> you know, you know uh, who out there is really wanting a pizza holder? But I was just so blessed that I got a, a free pizza holder that I can now deliver, you know, this and that. And it keeps the pizza warm. It's a hot pizza, this and that. But little blessings every day. I'm going to pray the Lord... Uh, blesses you and blesses those that give. If you want, you can give in the offering or you can go to www.aptab.org or, or, or mail it here. Praise God. But the Lord will bless I you mean, for it. Prayer. Amen. Absolutely. In, really, Amen. And that's so funny. I, I'm not, if you, you know, I believe that I don't try your left hand or your right hand what your left hand does. But when I sent that card and it was a what he told me. Amen. Because he would have told me here to that. I'll do it. I would rather, I can't afford to not obey him. Amen. Amen. When, when I got that, I stuck that in the, in the mailbox. Mm -hmm. the, I appreciate that, brother. The, yeah, but that's 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 supposed to be that way. I, I got that. so anointed and so blown. I was wasted all day. <laughs> Praise God. So it was good and good round. Amen. So you know what the Jews call that? They call that tzedakah which is righteous giving. Okay. And God, some people say, well, why are the Jews so blessed? Why are they you know, so financially blessed? Um, because the Jewish people believe in giving to good causes. And obviously the synagogue is uh, one of those causes. Um, but God blesses those who are givers. And, and, and I'm going to pray that the Lord looks at every widow's might. And, and, we're, and I know the times are all tough. And I understand. I don't even have to get so what it is is um it's gonna come and not, you know right now just kidding me. Ah, I trained your army one eleven Amen. times more because there's a lot Hallelujah. Amen. Oops, oops. Um, when does it start? When is it starting? Um we usually do. Um is there any of that thing right there, brother? A what? Envelopes. Okay. Oh right there on the yeah. sign. You, got good oh, those are, uh, you can wrap it in that. God bless you, and I understand 
God sees the widow's might. He sees everything. And like, like I said, um, we were right there with you. Um, and he, he's going to do a miracle for all of us. Amen? Praise God. So first I'm going to do a teaching, then I'm going to do a preaching. I'm really excited about this, this week's um, messages. I'm going to be teaching you today on the Jewish doctrine of good works. Praise the Lord. Everybody say good works. Good works. Hallelujah. Um, pray, and I'll give you a second there. Let me get everybody. You know, okay. Just to, yeah, absolutely. Praise God. God bless you. Yeah. And that's always open uh, whenever. Lord bless you, sister. I appreciate that. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Praise God. Um, if you haven't had a chance, while well, you're turning there, if you haven't had a chance to go to our Facebook site, we have an awesome new podcast series. Um, Dr. Richard Jimney is doing a podcast uh, on a semi-weekly basis called um, Shalom at Home. It's about uh, home life. It's about having a good marriage, good family life, good home life in your home. Check it out. It's a Shalom at Home podcast. Also, um, it's Rob, Dr. Jimney. Also, uh, Dr. Jimney uh, with uh, Rob Jim Shad are doing a, a, another show called, uh, actually, you know, his is called Tree of Life. And then the one with um, Brother Shad is called Shalom at Home. Uh, so there's the Tree of Life podcast, which is a Torah portion, and then there's Shalom at Home, which is about marriage and family and home life. So, um, whoa, weird stuff's going on on my computer. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Okay, praise God. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, that's uh, Ephesians 2. Turn with me now to James 2 and 17. I can just read that, praise the Lord. James 2 and 17 says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Faith, if it hath not works. Everybody say works. Works. Praise God. Um, Paul said, uh, we're saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Say works again. Works. Praise the Lord. Lest any man should boast. I'm going to be talking to you today about the biblical term, good works, that we read over and over and over in the epistles uh, and the New Testament, and the Gospels. Praise God. Uh, let's pray right now that the Lord will bless the remainder of the service. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We ask that you bless the uh, dispensing of your word. Let the word of God have free course in my mouth today. Help me to speak as your oracle and teach, Lord, and impart understanding and revelation of your word. In the name of Yeshua, bless the remainder of this service. Anoint me as your vessel today. Help us all to receive in our hearts and minds and our spirits today, what you have to give us, what you have to say to the church today uh, from your word and by your spirit in the name of Yeshua. And everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. So good works. Everybody say good works. good works. Praise God. We've all heard these verses of scripture about good works. Paul talks about it over and over and over again, that we are not saved by works, uh, but that we're saved by the grace of God. And how many know that to be true? Uh, I know I was a sinner out there partying in the world. I was 19 or 20 years old uh, uh, and uh, doing my own thing as, you know, a fresh out of high school, a couple of years, and uh, wasn't really looking for church or wasn't looking at all for church, wasn't looking for Jesus or, or Christianity. I was in the New Age and all kinds of other religions and so forth. And by the grace of God, he saved me. In the middle of all that, uh, I got a, a faith came to me. It's a long story, but how I came to the Lord, but at the very end there, I turned to the Word of God, I turned to the Bible as a source of truth, and uh, I repented of my sins, got filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, got baptized in Jesus' name the very next day, and God delivered me from all that, delivered me from sin, from drugs, from everything, and I haven't looked back since. Can you say praise the Lord? And I can't give myself any credit for that. That was by the grace of God. It was 
only the grace of God that led me to repentance. Amen? It was the grace of God that even led me to believe in the Bible, because I didn't believe in the Bible at that point. Uh, it was the grace of God that let, allowed me to get the Holy Ghost, be baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. It was the grace of God that led me to the waters of baptism. And he said, praise the Lord. Amen. Paul said, by uh, one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Now that sounds like it's talking about spirit baptism, but that verse is actually talking about water baptism. It's the one spirit of God that leads us to the waters of baptism. Yes. Hallelujah. And through baptism, through water baptism, we're baptized into the body of Christ. And when we're filled with the spirit of God, then we drink into that one spirit. Can you say praise the Lord? Lord. But that's all by the grace of God. So I cannot take any credit. Nobody can take credit for salvation. It's all by his mercy, his unmerited favor, his unmerited love, uh, his unmerited leading of his spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. Uh, Just the strength of God that helps us when we are weak. Can you say praise God? God. That's the grace of God. Um, But Paul here says, it is not of works. Praise the Lord. It says, not of works. Now, what in the world does Paul mean when he says works? Because he doesn't define his term here, works. He just says it's not of works. Now, if we're going to look at the Bible literally, if we're going to come to the Word of God uh, point blank and just at face value and look at it literally, Paul says it's not of works. Uh, Somebody could come to this and say, okay, it's not of works. Uh, That means uh, my full-time job working 40 plus hours a week does not save me. That's work. Hallelujah. Uh, going out into the backyard and getting a shovel and digging a big old ditch. That's work. How many know that's work? How many ever dug ditches? <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work. Yeah, oh, there you go. Landscaping. That's work. Is Paul talking about landscaping? You're not saved through landscaping. Is that what he meant? Praise God. How about fixing a, a, a transmission on your car? Your car goes out, lift that car up, drop the transmission, take the engine core out and resurface it, get a whole new transmission in there, blah, blah, blah. Is that what Paul is talking about? That kind of work, getting your hands dirty, Paul? He's talking about getting grease and dirt in your hands and your fingernails? We're not saved by that works, Paul? What is Paul talking about? What kind of works is he talking about? Women? Well, how many know houseworks work? Yes, Come on now. That's big time. That's big time. Amen. Doing dishes, sweeping, mopping, getting in the bathroom, cleaning the toilets. Uh, all that is hard work. Yeah. That's super hard work. <laughs> Amen. Cooking is hard work. Is, is that the kind of work Paul is Paul saying? Look, ladies, we know you work hard cleaning the house and cooking for your you're not saved by cooking. And you're not saved by cleaning the house with pine salt and comment. Is that what Paul's talking about? Is that the, Obviously, that wouldn't make sense. We can't just throw our own definitions of what works means. We have to take it in the biblical, scriptural, and the original context, which was Jewish language. How did the Jews speak? What terms were they using? As it turns out, this term works, sometimes you see it as good works, good deeds, or just plain works in the New Testament. Uh, When Yeshua was taken by the mob, and be, be read, uh, ready to be led into, uh, to the cross. He says, for which of these good works do you uh, seek to arrest me or stone me? Which of the good works that he's done? So we find this term good works in the Gospels. We find it in the epistles. Paul speaks about it. And even James talks about works. What does this term works mean, this term good works? Where does it come from? As it turns out, it is a Jewish loan word. Now, a loan word is a word uh, that exists in one language uh, and originates in one language, but makes it into another language for common use. And the New Testament is full of loan words. It's full of loan words. For example, a baptism is a loan word. It comes from the Hebrew word tzvila, which means immersion. For some reason, the Catholics and the Anglicans did not translate that word when they made the English Bible. Well, actually, the, the, the Catholics didn't make an English Bible. They kept it in Latin. But even when it went into English, uh, in King James and so forth, they did not translate that word. It's more of a transliteration. Baptism really isn't a translated word. They could have just translated the actual word from baptizo, going back to the Hebrew, tevila, and put immersion. Tevila? Tevila. 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 
and almost like avila, but with a T, tevila. And uh, that means immersion. That's what the word actually comes from in Hebrew. So they could have said John the Immerser instead of John the Baptizer. What does it mean? You know, we, we're all familiar with Christianity, but really, like, baptism, where does that word come from? It really comes to, from Tevila. It just means immersion. They could have translated it like that. And they should have said, you know, uh, uh, you must be immersed in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Instead of baptized, it's really more of a transliteration from baptismo instead of a translation. Another word that they didn't really uh, translate, it's more of a transliteration, is apostle. Um, they could have just translated that word, which is emissary, a delegate with authority on behalf of someone else uh, to perform a legal act. Um, those are all loan words. So another loan word is this term here, good works or works. It's the Hebrew term that's used over and over and over uh, by Jewish people in Judaism. In Hebrew, it's called ma'asim tovim. Try to say that. Ma'asim? 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 Tovim. Tovim. Which literally means good deeds or good works. It's used over and over again. It's used in the Mishnah. It's used in the Talmud. It's used by the rabbis. It's used by Yeshua. Used by Paul. Used by James. All Jews. And it's used by Jewish people today uh, to refer to deeds of the Torah. Works of the Torah. Or ma'asim tovim. So keeping the Sabbath and uh, shaking the lulav and Sukkot uh, are ma'asim tovim, they're good works. Uh, in other words, they stem from keeping the commandments in the Torah. Uh, let me just read to you something real quick here. In the Mishnah, it, say, it states here in Mishnah 8.15, uh, Mishnah Torah, the joy which a person derives from doing good deeds and from loving God who has commanded, everybody said commanded us. Who has commanded us to practice them is a supreme form of divine worship. So right there in the Mishnah Torah, which is part of the Jewish oral law, the rabbis are using the term ma'asim tovim, good deeds, good works. What are they using it to refer to? Obeying the commandments in the Torah. So when the Torah says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, when you obey that commandment, you're doing Good deeds. When the Torah says you shall uh, love or honor your mother and father, when you do that, obey that commandment, you are doing good deeds. When the Torah says you shall not kill and you don't kill people, uh, if you obey that commandment, you are doing good deeds. When the Torah says you shall uh, keep the Sabbath day holy, when you keep the Sabbath day holy, you are doing ma'asim tovim, and on and on it goes. And it also refers to charitable acts like feeding the poor, uh, visiting the uh, the imprisoned, uh, all of that. If you want to, if you want to see a textbook definition of ma'asim tovim, look at John chapter twenty-five when Yeshua said about the sheep and the goats. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats, and the the, sh the goats in the end say. Lord, when, when did we see you naked and not clothe you? When did we see you hungry and we did not feed you? When did we uh, were in prison and we didn't uh, see, see you in prison and we didn't visit you? He says, if you've done it to one of my brethren, you've done it to me. If you didn't do it to one of my brethren, you've not done it to me. That's a textbook def definition of ma'asim tovim, caring for the poor, feeding the hungry, etc., etc., what we call charitable acts. But all those charitable acts stem from commandments in the Torah, which talks about looking out for the poor, letting the poor glean your fields, the corners of your fields. In other words, the farmers had to let certain parts of the field just lay there, and so they could go out and gather the fruit for free. So let the poor get those. And there's other acts, uh, there's a second, the three tithes in the Torah, was first, the second, third tithe. One of those tithes was specifically to go to the poor. The Israelites would put a tenth of their income away uh, Four out of, uh, I believe it was four out of six years, uh, or two out of six years. i got to look that up. But um, there was three different tithes. I talked uh, a few weeks ago on this. And so one of the three tithes was specifically go to go to the Levites and to all the poor. It's essentially a form of Isra Israelite welfare for the poor. And not welfare where people are mooching off the system, for, but for the truly needy. Uh, people with no husband to support them, kids with no fa father or mother that were in what we'd call in the system, you know, the homeless, things like that. Well, what do you should say? The poor you have always. Is that right? Yeah. And so part of, one of the three ties was to help out the poor. And so when you help the poor, you are 
doing ma'asim tovim. You're keeping the commandments that God told us in the Torah to help the needy. Can you say praise the Lord? Yeah. You've got some praise right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, what about bringing the tithes into the shore? Is that where you get fed? There's actually three tithes, and you can actually look it up online. I have a whole service on that. There's one tithe that went specifically to the Levites. 10% went to the Levites because that was their full-time uh, calling to be in the service of God. Um, then there was a second tithe that went for you to put away essentially in savings so that three times a year you could travel to Jerusalem to keep the pilgrimage feasts, uh, Passover, Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacles. Um, so that money went to save up for that trip so that when you went to Jerusalem, you'd have money to eat and to just have a good time, but in worship of, of celebrate God. The feast. Celebrate the feast in Jerusalem. And then the third tithe that went... Again, uh, to the Levites, because they had no inheritance of anything. Um, like the regular regular Israel, the rest of the tribes, they all had farms, they had land, real estate, they had occupations. Levites didn't get any of that. They were full-time dedicated to God. And so God told all y'all farmers out there with acres of land, and you got big businesses in town in the market, and you, you got your vocations, you need to give a tenth of that to these guys that are called to the full-time work of God because they don't got nothing. They don't have any of that. They don't have land. They don't have Even if they had it, they could not dig it? What's that? Sorry to interrupt. Even if they had it, they would not, be, they would not qualify? The Levites? Be, yeah. Um, some of the Levites were given property, uh, but that was not their calling. They were called to do the work of God. So they couldn't spend eight hours a day in the marketplace. They couldn't spend eight hours a day farming fields. They were called to shovel the ashes from the altar and light the fire every morning. They were called to make sure the animals were sacrificed properly to help the priesthood. Um, so those are the three tithes. The actual priests at the top, uh, what, what happened was the Levites would give 10% of their tithe to the actual priests, the Kohanim. And then on top of that, the priests got what's called the teruma, a teruma, which is the whole set of offerings besides that um, of, of, of agricultural produce. They would get that. They would get the 10%. There was also other uh, first fruits and free will offerings and so forth that supported the priest. So it all came from the Israelites. Um, but all of that you know, plays out different ways today, but the um, Bible teaches us to basically to support the work of God with our substance. But um, whenever we give to the work of God, whenever we give to the poor, that's a mitzvah. That is keeping a commandment. That is Ma'asim tovim, that is good deeds. So ma'asim tovim, good deeds, means keeping the commandments in the Torah. Whether it's giving to the poor or whether it's keeping the Sabbath. Whether it's giving a tithe or whether it's uh, shaking the lulav uh, for Sukkot. Uh, whether it's eating matzah on Passover. That's a ma'asim tovim. It's all deeds that are keeping the Torah. Can you say praise God? Um, uh, when a child is born, when they're circumcised, there's a traditional blessing that they say over the child, uh, which is Keshem She Nichas Labrit Kain Ikanas Le Torah Nechupa Ul Maasim Tovim, which means as this child has entered the covenant, so may this child grow up to Torah, to Chupa, and to a life of good deeds. So, what does that mean? Three blessings uh, that they talk about uh, talks about Torah, talks about Chupa, and good deeds. Uh, so, they're blessing the child as, he, as he's circumcised. And they want the child to grow up to Torah. In other words, they want that child to grow up to be a Bible scholar. <laughs> they want him to be a, a good boy that reads his Bible every day and that goes to synagogue every week and, and he lives for God. He, he, he studies the Word of God as devotional every all the time. Uh, the chupa is talking about a marriage. A chupa is a canopy. Have you ever seen a traditional Jewish marriage where they have a canopy over the top? A lot of the times it's a prayer shawl. But the husband and wife stand under it. They say their vows under a canopy. So the blessing for the child is that he grows up to get a good wife and has a good marriage. So Torah, Chupa, and the third is Ma'asim Tovim, which is good deeds. What is that referring to? It's talking about you want the child to grow up to be somebody that lives holy for God. He lives according to the word of God. He keeps the word of God. He keeps the commandments of the Torah. He lives for God. Good deeds. And he's a good person. It's, it's charitable to others. So that's how strong this idea of Ma'asim Tovim is to the Jewish people. 
Um, another scholar said this, um, that feeding the hungry, this is Rabbi Dr. Howard Cooper and Anita Diamant in their book, Living a Jewish Life. They said this, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, housing the homeless. Sounds like Matthew 25 to me. This is a Jewish person writing this. Uh, housing the homeless. For Jews, these are not voluntary acts of charity. A word which derives from the Latin caritas, meaning Christian love. <clears throat> Jews, on the other hand, Jews are commanded. Wow. Commanded. Through mitzvot. Everybody say mitzvot. mitzvot. Mitzvot is Hebrew for commandments. Thou shalt not kill. That's a mitzvah. Thou shalt not steal. That's a mitzvah. It's a commandment in the Torah. Jews are commanded through mitzvot to feed, to clothe, and to shelter those who lack basic necessities. So what uh, Rabbi Cooper and, and Anita Diamant are calling out here is that it's not this idea that, ooh, I feel this emotion that I want to help the poor people and out of my spontaneous love for which is all good and well I'm not saying, trying to you know bash emotion or love I'm just saying you know you're just not relying on this tidal wave of emotion I want to help the poor today I'm going to give to them because I just feel like it today and they, they're basically saying that's more like the Protestant type of Christian mentality we have to have love also without love it's nothing right so we have to have the love involved also Problem with emotions is they're fleety and flighty, and they come and go. And if you just rely on emotion all the time, you're going to be up and down and inconsistent. And so what, the, what they're saying here is that before it's an emotion, obviously we want the love, and without that it's tinkling brass and sounding of symbol. But even besides the emotion, beyond that, it's a commandment. We're not just doing it because we get an emotional uh, tidal wave one day. We're doing it because God told us to do it. Yes. Commands us to do it in the Torah. Yes. Amen. Yes. So that's, that's fantastic. And so Christians would call it charity, but the Jews call it—they don't call it charity. They call it good deeds, good works that are commanded. You're keeping the Torah when you do that. You're obeying God when you do that. Yes. You're obeying the Torah. Maasim tovim, good works. Praise God. So the idea of ma'asim tovim, the, the definition of good works is something that you're doing that is keeping the Torah. You're keeping the commandments. You're fulfilling mitzvot. Praise the Lord. So ma'asim tovim means you're keeping the Torah. That's what that word term means. It's a Jewish loan term. So now let's go back to see what Paul said here. Let's read it again. For by grace you are saved through faith. Amen. Got to have faith. And not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, not of ma'asim tovim, lest any man should boast. So as great as, as doing all these things are, whether it's helping the poor or whether it's keeping Shabbat or, or Sukkot or Passover, any of these things, keeping the Torah doesn't save us. There's, absurd, there's religious Jews out there that keep the Torah stringently. You know, the Hasidic, the Orthodox, conservative, and even Reform. They're very serious about keeping the Torah. But without faith in Yeshua, they're still not saved. Okay? And that goes the same for anybody on the planet. We should, God bless those that keep the Torah, but without faith in Yeshua, you're not saved yet. You have to have faith in Yeshua as a Messiah in that blood that he shed, right? right? In order to be saved. So that's what Paul's saying there. Keeping the Torah doesn't save you. You've got to have faith for that. Now let's read what James says. We got that established. Everybody say amen. Yeah, amen. Okay, that's great. That's perfect. That's, what, that's absolutely 100,000% absolutely solid and, and true and right eternally and and absolutely foundational and salvational and necessary. But we got to remember, we got to remember that Paul was not the leader of the church. Oh, Lord. Paul is still kind of a convert. 
super intelligent, highly used, wrote apostles the to the emissary, Gentiles. Right? The but the head, he was an emissary to the Gentiles primarily, a Pharisee, which most of the church came out of the Pharisees. But here's the thing. The head of the apostolic church that we read about in the book of Acts, chapter 1, chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, throughout the book of Acts, the head of the church until he was killed was James, the brother of Yeshua, James, the brother of Jesus. He was the actual head of the Jerusalem church. When Paul got saved and began to preach to the Gentiles and this and that, he had to go to James to get approval. When he started t teaching uh, that, you know, Gentiles didn't have to be circumcised, that they didn't have to obey all the Torah laws that Israel did, uh, they weren't so big on kashrut, etc. It was a big dis you know, discussion, big controversy. He had to go to the council in Jerusalem, which was headed by James. And James put down the minimum requirements for heaven or hell. That's what he did. But James was the head of the apostolic church, you could say worldwide, really. That's the Jerusalem church was the absolute headquarters of the apostolic church, and James was the head of that. Is that Yeshua's brother? Yes. And he, got he eventually got killed. Was a right? right. So let's see what James here. James was very, very Jewish. Jim uh, Shad, uh, Rob Jim Shad, uh, has a book that he's been reading out on, on, on James. They, James was so Jewish, in Hebrew it's Yaakov, Jacob. James was so Jewish that the rest of the entire Jewish community in Israel and in Jerusalem respected him so much, they called him a tzaddik. A tzaddik is a righteous man, a holy man. It comes from tzaddik, or righteousness. Praise God. Even the non-believing Jews that didn't believe in Yeshua as Messiah, they all respected James because he was so observant of the Torah and so holy and lived so godly, keeping the Torah and living as a Jew normally lives. They called him James Sadiq. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. So let's see what James has to say about this whole situation. James chapter 2, verse 17 sums up James's opinion and his uh, the law that he lays down says even so faith if it has not worked is dead being alone let's start at the beginning of this passage what does it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and has not works now, now we understand what that word means, ma'asim tovim. Works means keeping the Torah, right? Okay. Works, same, same exact term Paul used, ma'asim tovim, works. So if Paul, when he said works, was talking about keeping the Torah, then when James uses the exact same word, the exact same term, it means keeping the Torah. So let's read it with that understanding. James says, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man has faith and has not ma'asim tovim? What does it profit if he has faith, but he doesn't keep the Torah? Can faith save him? Skip a few verses. Even so, faith, if it has not ma'asim tovim, Faith, if it has not works of the Torah, is dead. Being alone. But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works of the Torah is dead? You see then how that by works, by ma'asim tovim, by keeping the Torah, a man is justified and not by faith only. You say praise the Lord. Faith, if it has not keeping the Torah, is dead being alone. Hallelujah. O vain man, will you know that faith without keeping the Torah is dead? A man is justified by keeping the Torah and not by faith only. 
You say praise the Lord. So let's put Paul's words together with the head of the apostolic church, his words. We're not saved by keeping the Torah. We're only saved through faith. By grace. But faith without keeping the Torah is dead. Being alone. And James uses a few analogies. Be ye warmed and filled. What good does it come, someone come to you and say, they're, they're starving to death. And you say, hope you have a nice warm night out there on the streets of Stockton in 30 degree freezing fog. Bye. I hope your stomach's full. Slam the door. If you don't help them with food and with some sort of shelter, it's not going to do them any good. You say, praise the Lord. Faith and works is the same way. Praise God, you got Holy Ghost, you got baptized in Jesus' name, speaking in tongues. Good, good for you. Now you need to learn what the Torah says. Does it save us? No, but your faith is dead without it. You say praise the Lord. Let's go let's see what, uh, that was James. Let's go uh, to the next verse. After Paul gives that very famous verse about not being saved by works, but through uh, grace alone. Let's see what the next verse that Paul wrote uh, is. Ephesians 2 and 10. Now we read verse 8, we read verse 9. Now, knowing what we know about that term, Masim Tobi and good works, keeping the Torah. Now that we know what that means, let's read the very next verse, Ephesians 2 and 10. For we, who is we? The church, right? For we are his workmanship. Wow. Created in Christ Jesus unto Masim Tovim, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So Paul first says in verse 8 and 9, Y'all aren't saved by keeping the Torah, you're saved by grace through faith. But when God saved you, and created you a new creature. And created the body of Christ, the church. He created you unto Maasim Tovim. He created you unto keeping the Torah. You were saved to keep the Torah. You're not saved by the Torah, but you're saved so that you can keep the Torah. You're created unto. Ma'asim tovim. Faith without works is dead. Faith without ma'asim tovim is dead. Faith without keeping the Torah is dead. You were saved by grace through faith, but you were saved to keep the Torah. And what does he say? Which God has before. What happened before the cross? The Torah. God has ordained before that we should walk in them. What is them? The works, the Torah, mitzvot, the commandments. You say, praise God. You were created to keep mitzvot. You were saved to keep the commandments. Wow. You say, hallelujah. Saved to keep the commandments. You're not saved by them, but you were saved unto them. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Praise God. He made you into a new creature so that you could forsake your old ways and turn to the ways of the Lord. What are the ways of the Lord? Read about it. Genesis. They didn't have the New Testament yet. It's talking about Genesis through Malachi right here. Hallelujah. Thank God the New Testament was finally written to help us and to reveal all this stuff. But he's talking about the Torah, the Tanakh. He said, praise God. Now let's see what the master has to say about this. Praise God. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. Let's turn there. Praise God. Just to end cap Paul and James, what they're saying, keeping the Torah is not give you salvation. But keeping the Torah is the fruit of salvation. Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. 
This is the fruit of salvation. You're not saved by keeping the Torah. But if you are saved, you ought to have some fruit. And that fruit is that you begin to keep the Torah. Can you say praise God? <laughs> that way, <it> really good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Created unto. This is the way it is. Tovim. It's the fruit of your salvation. We should see some results of that. Bring forth. What did John the baptizer say? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is nigh. And then he said, and bring forth fruits of repentance. Hallelujah. Keeping the Torah is the fruit of salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's see what the master has to say. Hallelujah. In Matthew 5, verse 16, Yeshua uses the exact same term. It's a Jewish term. Let your light shine. Let it shine. On me. How many? Oh, so everybody loves that song. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your maasim tovim. Your good works. It's not talking about helping a granny cross the road. That could be one of them. But the primary maasim tovim are keeping the Torah. The mitzvot, the commandments, that they may see your masim tovim and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You say praise God. I'm just going to say this since yeah. since I've you know kept biblically kosher. People that know that you are walking your walk, they watch if you're going to take that pork pizza. Oh my They know if you're going to ask them, is this have pork in it? They know if you're going to... Let me try getting some, some of this Italian salami. Yeah, I'm going to see if they eat this stuff. Let's see if they really... It takes, it takes brass nerves of steel to resist that stuff sometimes. After a while, it doesn't, but in the beginning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, when they see that, they say, you know what? This person's serious about whatever they got to live for. They're serious about living for God. They don't eat the bacon. Boy, nobody can resist the bacon. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So the see your masim tovim and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, that's in verse 16. It's talking about masim tovim. So let everybody see so they can glorify God. What does he talk about in verse 17? Verse 17. He starts talking about people that are in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say to you, till heaven and earth pass, one stroke or one punctuation mark, it's Yod and, and Tittle, the little dots that are placed above, the, well, that's talking about uh, the, the, the Jot and Tittle in King James, uh, is talking about the little dots that they place above and below the Hebrew uh, letters to show you how to pronounce it correctly. It's not, there's the Hebrew letters and these little dots, the dagesh and the patach and the, uh, all these different uh, little dots that they put so you know how to pronounce the Hebrew word properly. And then when they do the calligraphy, they put these cool little horns on the letter that make it look really neato and really, really sharp. And, and Yeshua was talking about the little dots and the little <laughs> crowning horns on the tips of the uh, letter glyphs. He's saying, not one of those dots, or not one of those little finials, those little, those little crowns on those letters will pass away. Hallelujah. From the Torah, till all be fulfilled, whosoever shall break one of the least mitzvot, one of these least meets vote commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever, whoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Can you break down that, the verse before that? Yeah. Thanks. Praise God. So in one verse, Yeshua is saying, let men see your mind seem to be your good works, which we now know means keeping the Torah, 
so that they'll glorify God. And to some people who don't know what that means, then he starts talking about the law, the eternality of the Torah. Right. And he talks about keeping the Torah. And that those in the kingdom of heaven who keep it will be the greatest, and those who don't keep it or teach others to not keep it will be the least in the kingdom. Mm. Praise God. So to the people that don't know what Masim Tovim means, it seems like he's changing the subject from one to just you know, giving a stranger a dollar, here you go, sir, to keeping the, the Jewish law. But he's not changing the subject. The subject is the same, and the people he was preaching to all knew it because they're all Jews, and they know what Ma'asim Tovim is. So in one verse, he's saying, let everybody see that you're keeping the commandments, that you're keeping the Torah, that you're doing Ma'asim Tovim, and it'll glorify God. And he says, all oh, about those commandments, about that Torah. It's not going to pass away. Don't hold your breath. It's eternal. It will be done in the millennium. It's not going anywhere. Amen. And those that are in the kingdom that keep it will be the greatest. And those that don't will be the least. Now let me say this. How do you get in the kingdom? The kingdom of God was not. It hadn't opened up yet. John talked about it in John 3, 3 and 5. Nicodemus and Yeshua. Nicodemus came to him by night. The kingdom opened up in the book of Acts. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born of water and of the spirit to enter the kingdom of God. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. To get into the kingdom, you've got to be born of water and spirit. You've got to be immersed in water in the name of Yeshua, Jesus and you've got to be born of the Spirit. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Spirit of God, which always comes with manifestation of speaking in tongues. You say, praise the Lord. So who is Yeshua preaching to here? He says, those that keep the Torah shall be called the greatest in the kingdom, and those that don't, the least in the kingdom. So he's preaching to people that have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, saying that those that are baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and they're in the kingdom of God ought to keep the mitzvot. And they ought to keep the Torah commandments. And if they do, they will be considered great. But if they don't and they teach others not to, they'll be considered the least. Now, he did not say they'll be kicked out of the kingdom. Because we're not saved by the mitzvot. But they will be considered... How many has ever been on a new job? I hate that. You're, new, you're the low man on the totem pole. You're like the water boy. You know, ah, oh, here's the newbie. Hey, get my mail. I'm just kidding. You know, uh, I let the newbie do it. Give him all the junk work that nobody likes to do. Ah, I hate those jobs. Give them to the new guy. I don't want to do those ones. You're the new guy. You're the low man on the totem pole. Where if you don't, if you're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, you're in the kingdom of God, born again, and you don't keep the Torah, you don't keep Shabbat, you don't keep Passover, you don't keep Sukkot, you don't keep Kashrut, you don't keep any of it. Well, guess what? In the kingdom of heaven that we're all born into, you're the low man on the totem pole. Hallelujah. But if you are born again, according to John 3 and Acts chapter 2 and Romans 6 and Acts 10 and Acts 8, if you are born again and you do keep the Torah, you're doing your best anyway, guess what? You're considered the greatest in the kingdom. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll end this teaching with this. <clears throat> the book of John, Epistle of John, rather, he says this, By this we know that we love the children of God. How many love the children of God? We were supposed to anyway. <laughs> Sometimes it's not easy, but yeah. we're commanded to, right? We can't just rely on a fit of emotion because the emotion might not come for a while. We just know God said, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. <laughs> Yeshua said, he took it a step further. He says, love your brother as I have loved you. And, which is that, you know, self-sacrificing love. John said, by this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God 
and keep his commandments. Mitzvot. We know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his mitzvot. For this is the love of God, that we keep his mitzvot, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not a burden. You say, praise the Lord. This is the love of God. By keeping the Torah, we're showing God that we love him. We're not just giving lip service, you know, or something like that. We're actually showing him with our actions that we love God and we keep his commandments in the Torah. And they're not grievous to the, you know, Protestant mindset and so forth. Um, they seem like it's uh, legalistic, legalistic. Praise God. Because they put your money where your mouth is. Huh. Right? That's right. <laughs> 